everybody's asking for patience. Patience is a virtue that you get when you know that the person you're being patient about has a plan to succeed. But well, hunger and anger will come hand in hand. The issue is, why are you leaving it to the last moment? So this is my problem with this. We've got 48 hours before um, what is being called impending doom and, and gloom. What happened when they gave you this notice 30 days ago? When you knew this was going to happen, what steps were taken? How did you communicate all these things? We're now pushing and prodding to look for ways in which we can resolve a problem that could have been at least ameliorated 30 days ago or within the last 30 days. Communication skills are very poor in this administration. And I would have said to Mr. President, please come out and tell us your plan. So what is missing is statecraft. They're not, they're acting like a state government rather than a federal government. You put in people in place that understand how to run a state, but not to run a country. It's a different communication skill. Statecraft is needed. Who are we as Nigerians today? We haven't been able to enunciate that. I don't know. I could tell you what we were 20 years ago. We were an oil and gas country going forward and pushing this. Before that, we were a, a, a very strong military com country that uh, helped liberate countries like Liberia and Sierra Leone. But who are we and what are we today can really poorly be described as a country that is going nowhere and has no rudder, no vision. The next three years is a key point in which this administration needs to get Nigeria on its, on its feet. Mm. The problems of today can be solved for today. But if you do not make those concrete changes and they don't give you the notice the next time, you're really going to have a massive problem. Now you, they're telling you we're coming. Next time you may not get that notice. So this should be a warning shot across the bow of this administration. Get your act together. Put the right kind of people. Make changes before you're forced on by, you know, a protest or, uh, you know, bad um, publicity globally like Kenya did. He made the changes after the protest. Mr. President, make the changes before and show that you have those leadership skills that Nigeria want hopefulness, not mm -hmm. hopelessness. You know, I think, first of all, you've got, you've got to be able to critique Nigeria the way you have if you come into office. And I, you know, from all intents and purposes and lack of communication, we don't see that. Mm. When you don't see that, you're left to imagine what they could be going through. Look, we failed on some very critical points that make the foundation of this country solid. How can you grow industry when you have no electricity? Mm -hmm. I'll go back to this. The man has failed in that job. Put a technocrat there. This is fundamental. Thank God that even I can even gladly say we don't have a security issue in this country. It has diminished tremendously. And kudos to the NSA and the military and for what they've done. It's not finished, but it's improved. It's, you can palpably you can see it. that. You, you can, can feel it. it. So he has done some things right. The economy is failing, but it doesn't mean that it has failed. We're trying things, but enunciate. Bring the country along. Be populist. It doesn't take much. Nigerians like to feel as if they're engaged in something. And when you leave them to imagine, they imagine the worst. Mm -hmm. well, first of all, if I was given that warning 30 days ago, lots would have changed. Engaging Nigerians is what is, is the simple thing to do. I would have come out. I would have addressed the nation personally. And if I couldn't, I would have got people who keep that narrative and can enunciate and project what I want. But the president, a healthy, sane, confident president, will come out and say, this is where we are. I've inherited this mess. This is what I put in place. By October, this will happen. By December, this will happen. Give me some milestones Timelines. that I can feel comfortable. Yes, my president can hear me. You need empathy to rule Nigeria. You must feel everything. It's not a state governor. A state governor rules in a very jagged va version. He, he's, he, he almost wants to, you know, scare you into, into feeling that you are being helped. A Nigerian president, 220 odd million people, the capital of black on the continent, has to have empathy, has to engage. Look, Africa is, meeting, is, is, is needing leadership today and Nigeria should be that country giving that leadership. The Mandela era is gone. We don't have somebody on the continent that is leading. I was praying that my president, President Bola Metunubu, would have been that person. But you must lead at home first. So our foreign policy 
is in the toilet. As far as I'm concerned, we are not the giants of Africa anymore. We don't dictate. We created ECOWAS and three countries have left under this administration where the president I mean, is the, the president is, of ECOWAS. Where is the brilliant Bola Tinobu of 1999 Lagos? Because that is a question. The campaign said the magic Bola Tinobu deed in the eight years, 1999 to 2003, 2007, uh, 2003 to 2007, uh, brought Lagos on the global map. Yes. Made Lagos the third, fourth largest economy on the continent. Yes. And a lot of people thought that, well, we will have the same serve of that Tinubu that you had in Lagos. It, this may be years ago. But there are those who will say it's still the same Bola Tinubu uh, who was a treasurer of perhaps one of the biggest oil, uh, petroleum on oil and gas uh, uh, industry in the world. The question, where is that Bola Tinobu? Is there a problem of the handlers of this president? What exactly do you think is the gap? Well, I would love to get the Bola Tinobu pre-1999 because he'll have been in the streets protesting. This was the man who engineered protest. He would have been in the streets with the Nigerian youth on Thursday. Not to cause mayhem and gloom, but to protest and get functional things happening. That is the man that we knew before 1999. Look, I'm 60 years old. I'm looking at this country that's 64 years old, and I've seen things at a young age that I can engage with. I've traveled, I've seen, I've lived in other countries. Look, we are almost there. We don't have a visionary leadership. If it's visionary, it's keeping it to itself, but a visionary leadership presents and projects and gets people on the bandwagon. We're missing that. And I wish my president would get back to that 1999 president, uh, um, governor of Lagos State, that was energetic enough to push. And if you don't have that energy, you are the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. You can onboard the, the right kind of people. Look, we need technocrats now. Political favors have gone. You've done the first year, mm. Mr. President. Get the technocrats in the places that they need to be. The economy needs to be fixed. If, if, the, if the economy is not being fixed by the right person, get people to help him. Power needs to be fixed. Thank God security has been fixed. Infrastructure. I mean, you have to look around Abuja and just say to, 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 to the um, minister of the, of the federal capital territory, well done. Visibly engaging and seeing things happen. That's what's missing. But if you cannot visibly see change, give me hope. Yeah. And, if the, and the other thing that I'm really upset about is that the narrative is not with the government. It's with others. And when you have that void, when you're not speaking about what you're going to do, what your hopes are, then other people take and, and, and they subverge that.